Hi everyone, Arnold here, SantaMuerteMagic.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. The topic of today's video is going to be cultural appropriation and racism in Santa Muerte devotion. Uh, I received a couple of emails over the last month from people who expressed some concerns regarding these topics, and so I thought I would address them here. The first email I received was from somebody who uh, was non-Mexican, non-Hispanic, who was concerned that if they identified as a Santa Muerte devotee, that they might be perceived to be committing an act of cultural appropriation against Mexican or Hispanic culture. The first thing I'll say on that is that I do not think it's possible to appropriate an idea as universal as death. The Santa Muerte, as death itself, exists in all cultures, in all countries, in all languages, and uh, across history. Um, if there is anybody out there who claims to be offended by the appropriation of death devotion, then you must also be offended by the appropriation of the oxygen in the air or the appropriation of the thirst-quenching properties of water. There are some truths, like death, which are so universal uh, that I do not think they can be appropriated. Um, as human beings, we are all subject to death, and therefore um, the energy of death is available to us all. That being said, I do understand that we live in interesting times, we live in sensitive times, we live in this era of call-out culture and uh, cancel culture, and so I understand why, um, despite what I say, despite uh, my liberal views on uh, the matter, on who can uh, consider themselves a devotee of Santa Muerte. I understand why some of you out there might be hesitant um, and might be looking for ways to um, reduce your chances of falling victim to the type of drama that exists on the internet. For uh, for those of you who want to uh, reduce the chance of drama, who want to stay as peaceful and quiet about your devotion as possible, one tip that I have is uh, to simply uncouple your death devotion from uh, the Spanish-speaking um, Mexican roots of Santa Muerte. <clears throat> and one way you can do this um, is by simply relabeling what you refer to death as. If you've been following my site for any amount of time, you probably noticed that I use the words Santa Muerte and the words Holy Death interchangeably uh, because they refer to the same thing. They are both ultimately just titles or labels for the energy of death. Uh, you can, if, uh, if you only speak English, feel free to only refer to Santa Muerte, or the energy of death. Uh, feel free to only refer to those ideas as Holy Death, um, or Saint Death. Uh, if you speak another language, perhaps you're in another uh, country. I get plenty of emails from people in, in foreign countries, uh, foreign to the United States. Um, and, and so I know there are people out there who speak a variety of different languages. Whatever the language is in the place that you live or the culture that you are a member of, um, find out the, uh, the words for holy or saint and find out the words for death or the end of life. Put those two words together and you now have a title um, from your own culture, from your own language, that you can attach to the energy of death uh, in your devotional work. There is no requirement to maintain the uh, Mexican roots or the Spanish-speaking roots of Santa Muerte devotion. Uh, just as there is no requirement to maintain the Catholic roots of, of, of Santa Muerte devotion. Uh, I've often said that the idea of Santa Muerte as we know her today has come from Mexico. Mexico is a Catholic majority country and for that reason uh, many uh, people in Mexico who are devotees of Santa Muerte 
identify as Catholic and still pay homage to those Catholic roots. However, uh, in my own devotion, I've completely removed the idea of Catholicism from my own devotion to Santa Muerte. And um, I've experienced nothing negative because of that. Uh, so feel free to take it one step further. If you've already removed uh, death devotion from Catholicism, and if maintaining the Spanish-speaking or Mexican roots makes you hesitant, uh, then feel free to remove those roots also from your death devotion and plant your own roots uh, in whatever culture or language you desire. Death is universal. There is no requirement to maintain the Catholic roots or the Spanish roots or the cultural roots. Um, feel free to explore Feel free to make it your own. Another email I received was from uh, somebody who was hanging out a, in a Facebook group where comments were being made basically saying that people, um, that people who are not Mexican, who are not Hispanic, should not work with Santa Muerte, um, should not call themselves devotees. Uh, again, I... I uh, just as I, I don't think that anybody can appropriate, can appropriate a universal idea like death, I also don't think it's right for human beings to act as gatekeepers or regulators of other human beings in regards to what uh, spiritual paths fellow human beings choose to walk. Um, I am sorry to anybody who's ever experienced that kind of gatekeeping, that kind of racism, uh, that kind of small-mindedness. Um, I have experienced it myself in the past, outside of Santa Muerte Devotion, when I was in my early 20s. Um, I was essentially told by, uh, when I was practicing like New Age Paganism, uh, Wicca, uh, I was basically told that uh, the ancient Greek pantheon was not for me, that I should find a, a set of deities from my own culture, from my own cultural background, and, um, and that really hurt. Um, I, when I was exploring um, African and Afro-Caribbean traditions, the same kind of thing happened to me. I think I was hanging around some, uh, some blogs or YouTube videos, reading the comment sections, and there were some pretty ugly and nasty things being said about people who, uh, who those commentators viewed as quote-unquote outsiders, basically saying that if, if, uh, if you were not from the appropriate cultural background, that uh, the gods of the African traditions or the Afro-Caribbean traditions were not your gods. And that really hurt too. And so uh, from those experiences, I essentially uh, kind of walked away from uh, a, lot of, a lot of my own uh, spiritual practices. I still had my beliefs, but I wasn't, um, I wasn't regularly practicing uh, devotion or spirituality the way I am today. Uh, but then when I first met the Santa Muerte uh, in, in Mexico, which is how she was introduced to me, um, one of the first things I noticed was that uh, this figure, this grim reaper looking figure um, that I learned to be death itself, had no skin. And I thought that was one of the most beautiful, beautiful things I'd ever seen. Um, a, an entity or an energy which could serve as the foundation for a spiritual path um, which was completely um, race agnostic, completely removed from uh, the earthly baggage that, uh, that skin can carry. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with Santa Muerte. So anybody who tells you that Santa Muerte is a uh, Mexican energy or a Hispanic energy, uh, what I would uh, tell you to say back to them is then why does, why does she have no skin? She has no skin, so you can't tell for sure if, she's actually, um, if she actually is Mexican or even Hispanic. For all we know, she could be an immigrant 
who settled down in Mexico. Uh, nobody knows what color her skin is. Uh, the titles that we attach to her are man-made, uh, produced by us, simply so that we have a label to refer to the energy of death when we are working with that energy uh, in our spiritual practices. Uh, so overall, um, my main point is basically um, kumbaya and be chill. <laughs> there is no need uh, to lock people out of devotion to Santa Muerte. There's no need to be offended when you hear that somebody is uh, a devotee to Santa Muerte who you think is perhaps not brown enough. Um, death is universal and uh, we all have access to it because we are all one day going to die. We are all one day going to feel the embrace of Santa Muerte, um, regardless of whether or not we refer to that energy as Santa Muerte or Holy Death or Saint Death um, or anything else that we might come up with. Um, so do you, be yourself, feel free to explore. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me through my website, uh, there's also the, the Patreon messenger system and now the Discord chat server. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you all next time. Bye.